Hey, you want to know what makes a Neo Deum, Neo, tweeter do what it do? Watch this video. Be right back. I'm Big Jeff. Hit that like button. This way you can see it before you buy it. Hey, I'm Big Jeff from BigJeffAudio.com and also B2AudioUSA.com and we're here doing an unboxing where you get to see it, possibly hear it before you buy it. And we have right here the Rage H1 Neo, which is a set of tweeters that are 100 watt RMS at four ohms with a one inch voice coil, two kilohertz to 20 kilohertz with 104 dB sensitivity. And it's a titanium diaphragm, but a Neo magnet. Now, Neo is very light. It's a type of alloy, but they're very strong and it's a lot more expensive. Just because it's a Neo speaker doesn't mean everything is. The diaphragms are still titanium and you can see how small these things are. And the crazy part is this little tiny thing is what makes all the noise. But like any speaker, you have to have a magnet resistance. And then when you electrify it, it moves, but not moves like a woofer. Cool thing about all the B2 audio is we have replacement diaphragms. So if you blow one, way cheaper to just get yourself another diaphragm and they're usually pretty easy to rebuild so what we have here is about a hundred bucks a set not bad the last ones i did were the rage fours which had a really cool magnet and they were 150 dollars a set but they were not a neo magnet so some people say neodium some say neodium some just say neo i'm just gonna say neo because it is always a tongue twister for me Let's see what we get here. We got two tweeters. We have two base blockers or caps. And we have some screws. A good box with good packaging and we have a pamphlet. Uh, 100 watts, so 200 watts max. And this is, let's see here, hard to see the chart, but it is on our website. Uh, it really peaks up when you get to 2000 uh, Hertz and then goes all the way across and does not drop off past 20k uh, kilohertz 20,000 so real nice this is a uh, forum 2 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz 104 dB it is a titanium diaphragm and a neo magnet depth is 2.88 inches so it well, maybe a little bit long uh, depth wise, but still less than three inches. So I don't think you'll have a problem. We're gonna open this up. You're gonna see the design. And overall diameter is 3.85. And the bolt circle diameter, basically where you would bolt it in, you could cut it out a lot smaller. I'll get you that measurement. But open these things up. Okay. So the first thing to me almost looks like a, a, a compression driver. And the reason why I say it is because it's got like a horn on top. Uh, but this is classified or they call it a tweeter. Um, I'm going to call it, well, it's not a compression driver then, but it is a nice design. I really like how they have this cut out. This is definitely not your standard backing. It does have push, really tight push terminals. Uh, you do have your caps here. Uh, to mount this, real simple, because you only need a hole about two and a half inches, right? And then that would drop in because that's all you need to get in there. And then you can do your three screw holes. Uh, so this would be easy to mount. And yeah, I guess being only uh, under three inches, this can go plenty places. Um, it does have a very large cone, which is made to change the way the frequency uh, response is. And um, a lot of people like the bullets. Uh, most of your super tweeters and or uh, your compression drivers would uh, have that type of cone in there. Um, Another cool thing is three Allen head screws 
pops this off to take the old diaphragm out and put a new one in. So if you get a little crazy one weekend, you can repair it and be back up and running in no time. Um, also, if you're not using a separate amp and like a DSP where you can cut that frequency off that high, you will want to use these. Uh, these are pretty simple. You would put this in on the positive side like that. You would connect your positive there and your negative here. Uh, some of the newbies don't understand that or they just put this on there and connect it here. It has to pass through the capacitor. Let me put on the big Jeff cam so you get a close up. All right, so you can see this thing. It almost looks like a compression driver, just like a miniature one. Uh, so it's got a good uh, sensitivity at 104 dB, so this thing should be pretty loud and obviously only 100 watts do its job. But you can see how simple this is. Here I was talking about the push terminals and you can see the uh, Allen screws to pop this part off to replace the diaphragm. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do that real quick. So if you've never built or rebuild one before, give me a second, let me grab the right tool for the job. Oh, lucky first time. Okay, so if you do blow one of these, one, two, three. Okay, that's it. This comes off. Now, you do need in this particular one a siren iron because the two flaps are soldered, excuse me, soldered onto the push turbo. So you would just, you could pretty much pull this one off. When you put the new one on, you can reuse the old solder, heat it up and touch them. Uh, this is an H1 diaphragm and these are done at four ohms. So really can't screw it up, really simple. Put the new one on, you re-solder down, just heat it up right on where the screws are. It actually, there's two screws here that screw these push terminals on, and the solder's right on there. Really simple. Okay, this part of it, you can see uh, where they have, go ahead and turn the big Jeff cam back on. There's the uh, cone. Um, it's, it's crazy because the initial port of the music, or the, the sound comes out of this little area and then it comes out. It's pretty crazy, it's a wild build. So to put this back together, well, as long as the screw holes match up, the positive and negative is the same, uh, you're just matching the screw holes up. Get started. What I like to do is start them all before you crank it down. Now, they are marked uh, with a positive and negative and also a red and black. So you know what is what. Excuse me, I got allergies today. I haven't had much rain and it's killing it. Okay, so I get them all in there somewhat, just like loose tight, just a little bit. Then I go ahead and start cranking it down. This particular uh, Allen wrench I have will kind of bust off when it gets too tight, which is good. If you're using a regular Allen wrench, it doesn't do that. You don't want to overtime, you just want to get a nice tight turn. Okay, so that's all it is, simple. And this is uh, about a hundred bucks a set. Um, you get two of them and you have replacement diaphragm. So let's see what these sound like because I'm curious with that such higher frequency, uh, is it more of a tweeter or more of a compression driver? Does it get down lower for voice? And does it have that sound or not? The cool thing is that it's a Neo Magnet, so that's why this is so small compared to other tweeters uh, and their light. Okay, let's go hook these up. <laughs> also, too, keep in mind when you put these in there, you might want to trim it down a little bit. When you put this in the door, you don't want any of the metal from this touching metal. So either wrap it up, use some liquid tape or cut it down small enough so it does not happen because it will happen more times than you would know.
All right, let's take her over here. I can hook these two up together like that. Give my negative. I'm going to grab one more clip. these together so it's not going to be a left and right signal but okay that buzzing sound is from the amplifier okay we're using a four channel amp I'm only using one channel um, in this case they're gonna get about 100 watts total, which is under RMS. Very high pitch. Okay, uh, super high frequency. I did not expect it to be that high up, but I guess looking at the chart, where it was off the chart when you got above uh, 200 hertz, or excuse me, 2000 hertz. So, what would I use these for in an install? Well, um, I would use this in conjunction with a driver like a compression driver that has more vocal, a lower frequency, and or a set of tweeters, uh, like the ones we just did, the Rage P4s, which had a great vocal, and use these for that high pitch. These will really carry. Um, so for people doing those stunt walls, uh, not even that. I mean, if you were to kind of, you just it's not just a tweeter. It's really high, then highs, then like, vocals and then you work your way down. I think using this in conjunction with something that's a little bit lower frequency, these would really carry out and give you once you put it together. What I mean by that is you're just hearing these like that. You're not getting to hear it with the rest of the frequency. So if we had like a coaxial there or a driver loudspeaker where you had mid range and mid bass and you added these with it, it would open it up big time. So that's where I would, I would love to do that. If I had the money, I had the amplification, uh, I would, like I said, go with a full range loudspeaker, uh, a tweeter that's more in the, say 500 to 2000, and then get this up there, uh, you know, in the four and up. Uh, so, you know, just a, a full range of sound. So, really cool, uh, easy install, easy to replace diaphragms. This is the Rage H1. Uh, do me a favor, hit that like button um, and leave a comment, good or bad. Let me know how I did. If you have any questions, we'll try to answer them or what you want to see on the next one. Um, but you can get these at bigjeffaudio.com. 
or b2audiousa.com. Hey, I'm Big Jeff with another unboxing with B2 Audio. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you're watching to the end. Share this out and uh, I'll see you on the next one.